So I keep telling myself, now is the time that I need to go all in on YouTube. But what does it even mean to go all in on YouTube? Because the reality is, I don't wanna be a YouTuber. I don't see myself as a YouTuber. I'm just somebody who enjoys the platform. I enjoy creating and posting videos, but I'm not trying to be a full-time YouTuber. That's not my life, that's not my passion, that's not my dream. But I need to be going all in on YouTube, so let me make it make sense. So let's take it back for a quick second. Now, the year was 2020, and that's when the pandemic and the shutdowns and the lockdowns and all that stuff was going on. Like most of you, you know, I had no idea what was going on, right? It was just kind of like the world was at a standstill. Everybody was kind of in this state where they don't know what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. And when it came to the business side of things, it was even more uncertainty. See, I'm a photographer and a filmmaker. And so most of my business was done in person. And some of my biggest clients were restaurants. And we all know how it went with restaurants. It was shut down, it was open, it was take out, carry out, whatever, man. It was just a mess. So in the midst of all this uncertainty, right, some crazy and interesting things started happening. Basically, stimulus money. Now, when the stimulus money was being announced and the checks were about to be dispersed, everybody wanted to know what was going on. And when it came to business, there was even more interesting things going on, right? You had PPP loans, the infamous PPP loans, right? You had EIDL loans. You had a whole bunch of other grants and everything else going on. And in addition to all of those loans, you had these crazy unemployment benefits that were popping off as well. They were giving out unemployment with checks on top of that, checks on checks on checks on checks on top of checks. It just seems like they was just giving out money to everything. And what made it even crazier is that all of these programs were now open to the little guy, the 1099 contractor, that freelance photographer, that freelance filmmaker. All of a sudden, you could participate in not only the unemployment program, but you can participate in these government-backed loans. So like most of you guys, I was just trying to research and consume as much content about these programs as I could so I could get in where I fit in. Now, and in this process, being that I realized it was finally something for the little guy, the 1099, the freelancer, right? I was like, yo, I need to tell people about this because I already had a YouTube channel where I was making, you know, videos about photography, uh, videography, you know, creating content. And these people, people like you and me, actually qualify for these programs. So I jumped on the YouTube, made a little video, boom, you know, got a couple of hits, it got a couple of views. You know, I wasn't nobody at that time, but I just felt like, hey, if people are watching my videos for this type of content, then they should know about this so they can participate in these programs as well. Now, let me point out something real quick. At that time, I started making these videos. I was on YouTube for a few years, maybe about like three years, maybe at the most. And I was right at the point where my channel was about to get monetized. I was about to hit the thousand subscribers and I was about to hit that 4,000 hour watch time. Now, when I dropped these videos about some of these stimulus programs, all of a sudden I started getting a lot of views. I started getting a watch time and bada boom, bada bing, before you know it, my channel was monetized. Now, just like all the other craziness that was going on, it was like money was just falling from the sky. All of a sudden my YouTube channel started making some money. So I'm like, hold up, this thing is for real. And some of those videos that I made was really popping off. So I started making some nice coin on YouTube and all of a sudden I'm like, yo, I really need to be taking YouTube seriously. And for a minute I was, I was making videos about these programs and I was really genuinely trying to help. Now it didn't hurt that I was getting paid. Let's keep that clear, okay? But I really was genuinely trying to help and educate people who were like myself, who were in this position, who had a lot of uncertainty going on. A lot of your work was in person. The businesses that you worked with weren't opening up and we needed different ways to figure out how we can get money in the door and keep the lights on. And if you remember at this time, there was like a whole new set of like YouTube people who were talking about PPP and EIDL and they were doing like serious numbers, right? So this had birthed like a whole new genre of people who were coming up. But then you had people like Meet Kevin, right? So check this. One day I'm chilling, I'm watching one of his videos and he's actually showing the back end of his YouTube and how much he made in one month. Now this guy made $250,000 in a single month off of YouTube. That's a quarter of a million dollars in a month off of YouTube. 
And I'm sitting there looking like, bro, if I can get like 1% of that, you know what I'm saying? I'm kicking it. Like, for real, this dude making 250,000 off of YouTube. And then I'm sitting there and I'm really scratching my head like, yo, I really need to get serious about this thing. But therein lies the problem. This is where I had came to a crossroads, right? Because I could have kept making videos about stimulus and PPP and fraud and people going to jail and all this other junk but I wasn't really into that, that wasn't my thing. I was really just talking about these programs because I wanted to help other freelancers who were in my position. Also, what I noticed is that a lot of these YouTubers, their channels have blew up, but they also started upping and increasing the volume of content that they were putting out. You know, they were putting out two, three videos a day, and you're talking about long form videos. So, you know, this isn't no like one minute, you know, shorts or some TikTok reel or whatever the case may be, you're talking about people putting out like eight, 15, 20 minute videos. And as somebody who does video production, that's a lot of work, that's tedious, man. Like you really gotta be focused in and, and locked in. Now, if I was making $250,000 in a month, trust and believe I'd be locked in. But I wasn't making that, okay? I wasn't making nowhere near that. So I wasn't locked in like that. But the question still remains. Do I continue making these types of videos where that's not really what I talk about, right? That's not who I am, right? I'm into, you know, photography, videography, being a creative entrepreneur, having some side hustles, talking about making passive income. I wasn't really into that. And I wasn't really trying to drop videos every single day. And so what ended up happening was as those programs faded, so did the views. And I didn't want to keep fighting and creating more clickbaity stuff or turning into a basically a news channel to keep those views up and going. I wanted to get back to doing the things that I like to do. I have the ability to make that content. I could have kept going every day and made high quality content if I wanted to, but I didn't want to. I didn't wanna be a full-time YouTuber. I don't wanna be posting videos every day and basically turn into a news channel and just always chasing views. I like to make the things that I like to make. So I had the ability, but I didn't have the passion. So that brings me back to the original problem where I'm telling myself that I need to go all in on YouTube. But what does that mean for somebody like me who's not a YouTuber and doesn't wanna be a YouTuber? And I think what it means is that I need to really focus on the bigger picture. See, going all in on YouTube for me would create opportunity. So it's not only opportunity to make money because my channel was monetized, but it's opportunities to do collaborations, right? To, um, to work with other creators, right? To have more notoriety or recognition. See, during that time when I was making all those videos, I was getting some recognition, right? And I was going and talking on podcasts and you know speaking with other people and it was pretty cool for the most part. But then I also had opportunities. I had one just recently where I had an interview with this book publishing company called Blurb. I've been using this company for years and I actually made a video on my YouTube channel a couple years ago about ordering a certain type of book, testing out the quality and doing a review. And from that review, they actually reached out to me and asked me to do an interview as part of a marketing campaign that they had. And not only did they ask me to be a part of this interview, but they also paid me to be a part of it as well too. So I mean like, come on, that's a no brainer. I would have done the interview for free, but they offered to put a little money on top of it as well. So like, Come on, who ain't doing that? So for me, I think that's what it means to go all in on YouTube, to be more conscious about the videos that I'm making, right? To actually share what I know or what I've learned, right? Because those are always the videos that have done the best for me, right? When it was back with those, uh, you know, the PPP and the EIDL loans, I was really just sharing the knowledge that I was getting, right? I was just sharing that, passing that on to somebody who was like me in that situation. And the same thing with my other videos. I was just sharing knowledge that I feel like people in my position wanted to know. You know, you wanted to know what the book looked like or what the paper felt like or what the quality of the colors in regards to that photo book I'm talking about. Or you wanna know about certain cameras or lenses, right? When you're doing your research before you make a big purchase. Sometimes you wanna see behind the scenes of how people go about creating their content, what's the equipment that they're using. And for me, I can do that. I can make videos about, you know, the things that I'm going through or the knowledge that I've acquired or, you know, about different cameras or about different lenses and about the things that I like. And I can do it when I wanna do it. 
but I need to do it more consciously. I need to do it realizing that I need to put out a quality product instead of just, you know, throwing out a bunch of jargon here and there and just chasing views for the day or for the moment. I need to make good quality that can stand the test of time because those videos I made were from years ago, but yet they still opened up opportunities for me today. So for me, I think going all in on YouTube means that I just have to be more conscious. When I go out to shoots, make sure that I'm getting some behind the scene footage. Make sure that, you know, the things that I'm doing within my video business, I'm making notes and saying, hey, I might make a video about this or share what I learned about, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I feel like doing that at a good level can create different opportunities, whether that's gear for me to review, whether that's equipment for me to, to, to use in the behind the scenes, you know, whether that's a sponsorship, whether that's a collaboration to be on somebody's podcast or to do an interview. You know, it's just a lot of opportunities that can come from this platform aside from your channel being monetized. And the reality is, if we take it back real quick, during that time where business was jacked up, but my YouTube was popping, that actually got me through. I actually made a decent amount of money on YouTube, more than I would have ever expected. And I was like, yo, this is, this was, this was up. You know what I'm saying? So if I can have something like that, going on in the background, because let's face it, we all wanna make some money, but at the same time, doing something for yourself, creating your own assets. When you're somebody like me, you're a filmmaker, you're usually doing a lot of client work, right? But it's always nice to have something of your own that you create for yourself, just from pure enjoyment or, you know, just from pure inspiration. So that's it for me today. Hopefully you found that video useful and helpful. And if so, give me a like, drop me a comment, let me know what's going on with you right now and your creative journey. And until the next time, keep on shooting and doing what you're doing. Peace.